Hey, what's happening, guys? Today, I want to talk about this. Not that mess. This guy right here. The Arduino Nano. But what we're going to talk about is going to apply to any Arduino. And that is a basic understanding of what the Arduino is and how it works. I've had a few people write to me or comment on a video and say they just didn't understand the Arduino. What, you know, what is it? So I'll take a few minutes today and just kind of try and explain. I think I've got a simple way to explain it. All right, let's start off by just saying there are a number of different Arduino models. There's the Uno, the Nano, the Micro, the Mini, the Duo, the Mega. But for the most part, the Nano and the uh, Uno R3 are pretty much the main ones. And they're the ones that I use all the time. In fact, I don't even use an Uno. I use this because it is exactly the same as an Uno. It's just a smaller form factor. So this right here is what we're talking about. This is the actual Arduino itself. It's this chip. It is the uh, AT Mac. Ah, uh, now you see that was in my brain and it went away. The AT328P from Atmel. That is this microcontroller here in this little quad flat pack. Everything else you see on this board simply supports this chip. There's a crystal that controls the timing to make sure everybody's talking at the same rate. On the back side, we have a USB interface so that we can communicate with the computer via this uh, USB mini connector here. There's a voltage regulator so that you can put in, oh, I don't know. I wouldn't go over 12 volts, but I, I think I read somewhere you could put it up like 20 volts on this guy. Keep it 12 or under though, because remember excess electricity turns into heat some capacitors and really that's about it now there's another interface here but the heart of the arduino is going to be all these pins see all the pins on down each side we have tx rx reset ground then these are our digital pins digital 2 through digital 13 okay we flip that over and then we have our analog pins, analog 0 through 7. Then we have a couple more pins up here. We have a 3.3 volt, a voltage reference. Over here we have another reset. We have ground, and then we have VN. Because if you're using your Arduino in a project somewhere, you know, you're probably not going to want to hook it up via USB, so you can just put that there. Now you're also going to see there's a 5 volt and there's a 3.3 volt. So those are outs. So the VN is in. That's electricity in. The 5 volt and the 3.3 volt are electricity out. So that can power the various sensors and devices that you are going to put in your project. Now, let's talk about the digital pins. That's these guys here from D2 through D13. Yes, I know there's more. We're not going to talk about that today. Now, these pins are the heart of the Arduino. They can be inputs or they could be outputs. And it's up to you to set it up in the Arduino IDE. The IDE is the Integrated Development Environment. Just think of it as the programming language for the Arduino, and it's very similar to C++. We also have a reset button up here, and we have some LEDs. We have an RX, it's receiving data, a TX, it is sending data, power, it's turned on, and this is connected to digital 13. This is your built-in LED. So our digital pins we were talking about here, they can be connected either well, not connected. They can be set up either as an input or an output. So let's say you have a light sensor. And when it's dark, 
you want the Arduino to turn on a light. This is an example. So let's say we set we hook our light sensor up to pin D2 and our light to pin D3. So then we would have to write a little program that says watch pin D2. And when you see a signal on pin D2, output a signal on pin D3. So that means we have set up pin D2 as an input and D3 as an output. And you can do that for any of these pins. Now, these are digital. That means they are either on or they are off. There's no in between. On is 5 volts, off is 0 volts. So you're either going to get 5 volts or nothing off this pin, and you're either going to output 5 volts or nothing off this pin. And that applies to the PWM, which are the pulse width modulation pins. I think there's six of them on here. I'd have to look up to see exactly which ones they are. But they allow you to kind of fake changing the volume, changing the voltage, volume, changing the voltage by rapidly turning the signal on and off so that you get an average voltage. So let's say we want our light to turn on, but we only want it to turn on at half power. So we would set this up as a uh, PWM output at 50% duty cycle. So, you know, 5 volts at 50% duty cycle, you're going to get 2.5 volts. So you can have any number of inputs, any number of outputs, you know, as long as you have pins for them. You can watch half the pins and do outputs on half the pins. You can watch all the pins and simply, you know, do a report to a screen or anything you like. Now, the Arduino also, well, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> now, the analog pins, analog 0 through analog 7. These pins allow you to pick up a voltage between 0 and 5 volts. So if you are reading what we would call an analog sensor, something that simply sends out a voltage instead of a code, you would hook them up to these pins. But if you're not using them for that, they can be configured exactly like the digital pins. Now, what I was trying to say earlier before I talked about the analog pins, is there are a number of interfaces built into the Arduino. Obviously, we have USB. And then we have this thing, which I think it's called what? ICP interface. We also have I squared C, which is a two pin interface, two wire, data and clock. And then we have SPI, which can be like a three or a five wire. So all those interfaces are available and there are plenty of inputs and outputs for you to choose from. Let me give you just a simple example of some. Okay, so here's a collection of Arduino sensors I use often. All right, let's see what we got here. This guy, focus, is a BMP280. This is a barometric pressure sensor, okay? This sensor will allow you to find out the current temperature where you're at and the pressure. And it uses... Clock and data, I squared C, even though it has many more pins. Here is a uh, three axis gyro that can detect the position of the board in space. VCC, X out, Y. See, this uses three separate linear outs or analog outs. So, this would be an example of an analog sensor as opposed to this one, which would be a digital sensor. Um, this is a, another temperature and humidity sensor. DHT11, this is the most popular one for Arduino. It has three pins, a signal out, uh, ground, and VCC. This is a capacitive touch board. We, we don't have to get into everything. We're just kind of hopping over some basics here to give you an idea of what's available. This is a level shifter. The older style Arduino Nanos, Unos, and all them work at 5 volts, whereas all the new stuff is 3.3 volts. So this will allow you to go from 5 to 3.3 or 3.3 to 5. 
this is a uh, gesture sensor. I never could get it to work right. I can get it to work, but it's not accurate. Then I have a number of displays. This is a full color OLED in I squared C. Single color OLED I squared C. I use a lot of these single color OLED I squared C. This is a microwave sensor. Can tell when there's somebody around. Uh, this is a volt or a current sensor. Yeah, the IN, INA two one nine DC current sensor. So all of these things are out there. All of them are available. So I guess we have to address the elephant in the room. This is kind of old technology. It's at least ten years old. Is it still viable today? Absolutely. You can buy these for about three bucks. And all the sensors and outputs and stuff for the Arduino, unless you get something very specific, very esoteric, they run about five dollars. So, you know, you can get all the parts for your project for maybe 20 bucks or so with Arduino. And I think compared to everything else that's out there today, that makes the Arduino a winner still, even though it's older technology. I still use them every day, and I know lots of people who do. Let's go this way to the computer, and uh, we'll take a look at the Arduino IDE, the, uh, the interface, as soon as it loads up. So here, I'll give you guys an idea. I'm going to loosen the phone clamp here so we can move around. There's the workbench. And then as we swing around here to our left, there's the computer. All right, so we're looking at the Arduino ID interface here. I think this is a 1.8 or something like that. I thought it would usually show you there what they are, don't they? Guess not. Yeah, 1.8.6, okay. So this is the little program I wrote for the LED tape the other day. Just to give you an idea of how the programming works. So Arduino programming is done in two giant blocks. There can be many more blocks, but you have to have these two. And they are called setup and loop. If you don't have those two blocks in your program, it will not work. So the setup is just what it sounds like. We're going to set up the Arduino. Remember what I told you. The Arduino simply looks for inputs, reacts to them as it's been instructed, and then outputs whatever, you know, needs to be done. It simply processes information. That's what, it, that's what the Arduino does. Okay. So in our setup block here, let me grab a pen. Okay, so what, all we've done up here is we've just given names to these pins. Pin 3 is now called red, pin 4 is called green, pin 5 is called blue. I'm just telling you that so you know what we're doing. So we are going to set these pins for inputs. So pin mode, that's how you tell the pin whether it's going to be an input or an output. Then in parentheses, the pin number, a comma, and whether you want it to be an input or output. And every line in Arduino must end in a semicolon. Why? Because you don't have to have lines. You could do this all in one line. All the compiler is looking for is that semicolon to know where that command ends and the next one starts. All right, so we set our pins up. And in this program, we're switching something to ground, so we want them all off. And in that case, we set the pins high. So pin red, or yeah, yeah, pin red, which is pin number three, high, that turns it on. Those are all turned on. Now, I'm not going to be able to cover everything in, in this, you know, what, 10, 15 minute video. I'm just giving you an idea of how easy it is. In fact, let's write a little script together. Okay. So we'll start with our setup, and we'll say pin mode, yeah, and the capitalization 
the syntax is very important. See how it turned red? Pin mode three. input. So now we've set pin 3 to watch for a signal. Pin 5 we're going to set for output. And then we come down here and we tell the Arduino what to do. It's really easy. Now I'm not a programmer in any sense of the word. I do my programming by brute force, which means I keep trying something until it works. Changing things, obviously. I'm just doing the same thing over and over again. Like my life. I mean, that would be madness. All right. So now we're going to tell the Arduino to look at pin 3. So we're just going to say digital read. Because it's digital, remember? It's either on or off. Digital read pin 3. And now we can say, what can we say? All right, I forgot one thing. We need a variable. In this case, will be an integer, and we'll call it val. And we'll set its value at zero. So now we can say, val equals digital read three. So our, our variable val here is whatever that pin is. So if the pin is receiving a signal, val will be 1. If it is not, it will be 0. Are you with me so far? So now we've watched our pin. Now it's time to do something. And we can say... If val equals one, remember that syntax is very important here. So there's our simple program. We created a variable called val and set it to zero. We said pin three is an input. We said pin five is an output. We said listen to pin three. And if pin three has a signal on it, turn on the signal on pin five. Now this can get 10,000 times more complicated, but that is the basics of Arduino. And if you understand that, you can program an Arduino. That's really all there is to it. So if you didn't know about Arduino before and you were kind of on the rocks and you're wondering, is this something I can do? Yeah, you can do it. I hope this gave you a little help. And if you need more help, I'll put a link down below in the description to my Arduino playlist, which has like 200 videos in it. So you should be able to find something there. All right. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. I mean, otherwise I'd just be making this stuff and sending it out into the space for no one. That's it. I'm out. Peace.